go up, it's the value of the dollar that goes down. And people a lot of times talk about, oh, you know, the price of gold is $1,500. No, the dollar used to be one twentieth of an ounce of gold. Today it's one fifteen hundredth of an ounce of gold because we just print a lot of money. And we printed this money more so than any other country was ever able to because we were issuing the reserve currency of the world. The dollar was as good as gold, and uh, that broke down, Bretton Woods broke down in 71, and that, I thought, that would slow us up a little bit, but actually, it speeded things up, and the confidence level for foreigners to accept our dollars has been amazing. But they're, they're not going to, the thing that, the peop the thing that people will recognize will be higher prices and interest rates will go up. You know, Damon is one of those people that goes to bed at night reading books on monetary policy. <laughs> and we were talking about this before you arrived, is that it's so important, obviously, these huge economic issues based on monetary policy and the Fed, but for most people, it's intangible, it doesn't mean anything, and their eyes glaze over. So how do you, how do you as a politician, how do you as a leader, convey in simple messages to make people understand how important that is, or is that even possible? Yeah. Absolutely, it's possible. I think this is where we've made our greatest strides. I mean, four years ago, uh, nobody was talking about the Fed. Everybody knows about the Fed now. And, and we use a cliche, and it's technically incorrect, but we talk about printing press money. I mean, everybody refers to that, but it, it isn't even printing money anymore. It's just clicking computers. I mean, last week, there was a $25 billion increase in the money supply in, in the reserve. The Fed created with a, with a computer. Now people people understand printing press money, I, and, and I I talk to high school kids all the time. I think they clearly understand it. They can understand monopoly money, and uh, and so they say, yeah, if you if you double the supply of money, is that going to create wealth? I I just think that uh, we're winning that battle, and it's it's a lot different. I think that uh, when I went to Congress with the same concerns, uh, that way you knew what the heck I was talking about. <laughs> I think they talk, I think they know very much so right now. That's how, I mean, just uh, just getting the attention to get this bill audited in the Fed passed, and uh, actually I was helped by Barney Frank to get that bill passed in the House of Representatives. It was bipartisan, both parties said, you know, um, you know transparency. People are for transparency, it's a good way to bring people together. And uh, when they hear that a third of the trillions of dollars the Fed spent in the bailout went to foreign banks, that's not too complicated. You know, people are outraged by that. And they know I want to stop it. And who would you, if you were uh, to be nominated, who would your ideal, who would you choose for a running mate? You know, somebody asked me that not too long ago, and I threw out a name, and then afterwards I said, you know, I probably shouldn't have done that. <laughs> you were asked at the debate, I think. What? I think you were asked at the Oh, yeah, they asked me which... which show, right. when, when I'm not saying one of them. I'm just saying... Yeah, general, anybody. Let me, well, let me I have things in my mind, but I'm not so. going to throw out another name because, you know, because I'm going to offend some of my friends that, <laughs> you know, are quite qualified. Well, who would be the type of person you would want? Right, I mean... That have to believe in... Well, right. what I did when they asked me in the debate, I, they said, well, you pick any of these, and I ducked the issue. I said, well, I haven't even asked them what their position is on the Federal Reserve. <laughs> so I want to know what their position on the Federal Reserve, on monetary policy. Are they going to bring the troops home? Or do they want to repeal the, the Patriot Act? Do they want to balance the budget? Do they want to obey the Constitution? What's their interpretation of the Interstate Commerce Clause? How do they inter interpret the General Welfare Clause? And uh, how, what do they think of the necessary and proper clause in the Constitution? And if I got the right answers, then I'd say they're a candidate. So we're looking at Paul Paul 08, or uh, 2012, Rand and Ron. It would be legal. <laughs> Somebody asked me today whether he liked one of the, another member of the, Congress, of the Texas delegation. He said, can you pick so-and-so as your vice president? I said, no, you can't do that. It's the same state. But then I got to thinking, well, but it would be legal picking. <laughs> I don't think he's looking for the job at the moment. <laughs> Thank you so much for your time. I, we don't want to take up too much. I think you've got another engagement. Right. We, we thoroughly enjoyed it. Yeah, well, thank you. Uh, Lloyd, do you want to ask your question? I know you've asked Congressman the last time you see, but he's probably forgotten. Yeah, I'd asked before what three people throughout history you might like to have dinner with. And, oh. um, you took religion, you said you, you know, had to it, take religion out of it. Most, most people um, ask, I was asking, the other day, and they wanted, uh, 
they wanted a political figure. And I'm least, probably less interested in talking to political figures, yeah. but they pushed me on political figures and I gave them a surprise answer. I said, of course, most people wouldn't, wouldn't mind a conversation with Thomas Jefferson, but uh, I would have liked to talk to Grover Cleveland because I see him one of the, the last uh, believers in sound money and uh, a sensible foreign policy and he believed in the veto pan, so it might be interesting. But I would probably pick economists because the uh, understanding the economy is key. And let's, let's you get people to understand some basics and know it's in their interest. So they, they came around, as Nixon said, we're all Keynesians now. Most people say, yeah, Keynesian means they're going to send me a check. You know, so we're, we're for that. And uh, so I would, uh, I, my goal is to get people to see it's in their best interest to believe in free markets and sound money. So I would like to talk further with uh, Individuals like that. I would. I, I think I'd enjoy talking to Mises. I did hear him lecture one time. You when he was, Mises four years ago, right? When, Jefferson. when he was, uh, when he was, um, you know, probably on his last lecture tour, he was in his nineties. But I did have long conversations with people like Murray Rothbard and Hans Sensholz and and Leonard Reed, uh, who are very important in teaching free market economics. And Hayek, I, I had a. A brief conversation. I had dinner with him once, but Mises, I'd like to, uh, because he had, he had a quote, and I will, I'm not good at remembering the quotes, but I used it frequently. He says, "Certain individuals, their purpose is to uh, think out theoretical answers and explain them uh, in a very very academic way, and then there are others who will take these views and make them palatable to the general population." So, of course, I think of myself being more in the second category of making an effort, and I'm sure I have shortcomings on it, and you challenged me on that, can you make it really acceptable? And, but that's what I work on, because I, if, you don't, if you don't make it acceptable, uh, there'll be a rejection. Governments are a reflection of the general attitude of the people. That's why newspapers are so vital, because they're always giving out opinion. So, uh, and, and now today you're challenged by other things, not only the conventional TV, the cables, and the internet, oh, yeah. and everything else. But it's it's the attitude of the people. So when the attitudes of the people are such that, yes, there's something something strange about the Federal Reserve, like 80-some percent of the people say we should audit the Federal Reserve. That's fantastic. So the attitude of the people is, is the goal. You have to change it. So I would like to learn better how to make these views palatable to all the American people. Oh great! Well, last time you here, you signed our refrigerator, and and this is some, this is a bat blast from the past, and so we'd like you to sign it again on our new panel for the new election. Okay. Can you do that. Put it. Thank you so much. I see this first name, but I can't read this second one. <laughs> Should I try to outdo him? Yeah. <laughs> oh, I don't know. That's. that's I'll, just, I'll just do my usual thing. Four years ago, John Edwards thanked the media for all it does. I don't think he feels that way anymore. <laughs> Okay. Oh, awesome. Okay. Good to see Best you, of luck. Thank Good. you so much.